Good morning and welcome to Explorer Classroom. My, my name is Vivette Dukes and I am so glad you are joining us today. Here in the United States, we're celebrating Jewish American Heritage Month and Asian American, Native Hawaiian, and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. These varied groups of people have impacted local history, our communities today, and will continue to impact our world. To our viewers and explorers who identify as part of these groups, we see you and we celebrate you. At National Geographic, we believe that anyone can be an explorer and that you have the power to make a difference in the world, no matter how old you are. Explorer Classroom is here to inspire you with stories from the field and connect you with our National Geographic Explorers live to answer your questions. This month, our theme is wildlife. From tiny fish that live deep in the ocean to big bears that live high on mountains, animals across the globe need our help to ensure that they are protected. Today, our explorer is Phoebe Griffith. Phoebe is a researcher who studies some of the largest animals found in fresh waters, working with the Zoological Society London in England and Nepal and IGB in Germany. Phoebe's research focus in recent years has been the gharial, an incredibly special endangered crocodile found in Nepal and India. Through conservation efforts to protect the garial, such as putting tags on them to collect data, Phoebe and her team hope to help this special creature grow in population. Today, Phoebe will tell you more about her work and freshwater predators, including a bit about the garial. Before we get into today's lesson, I'd like to welcome our registered viewers who join us from around the globe. Special shout outs for today go to St. Luke School, Elko Middle School, Roseland Creek Elementary School, Horse Creek Academy, Joyce Kilmer Middle School, Adrian Independent School District, and all our home schools out there. We're so thrilled to have you all here with us. And with that, let's get this Explorer Classroom started. It's almost time to meet Phoebe and share all about the freshwater mega predators. First, Phoebe is going to take us into the field with her to see what her office is like. Andre, our producer, is going to help connect us. Hi guys, really nice to meet you. I'm Phoebe Griffith and I'm a scientist who studies freshwater animals. And for that reason, we're out here on the lake today. This is Lake Mugglesay, the nearest lake to my office. So now I really love fresh waters like lakes because you never know what's under the surface, but often there are some really cool predators under the surface. Now today, it's way too cold for us to get in the water. And actually the water is, is really turbid and that means you can't see very far underwater. But what I have got is a couple of videos of the types of animals we might find underwater in this very lake. So this guy coming up underwater is a pike. Now they ambush other fish that they eat. And what that means is they wait in underwater plants where they're really well hidden. And then they jump out and grab the fish and they move really fast over a short distance. Now, this is a huge group of a type of catfish called Wells catfish. This is one of the absolute biggest fish you can find in rivers and lakes in Europe. Um, and this is just this incredible behavior that where scientists saw loads and loads of these catfish all coming together underwater. They were pretty awesome, huh? Well, before we move on to talk about some more mega predators we might find in freshwater ecosystems, let's think a little bit more about all those words I just used. What's freshwater? What are ecosystems and what are predators and especially what are mega predators? Okay, friends, I'm curious to see if you all recognize any of these important vocabulary words. 
raise your hand, stand up, whatever feels natural to you. If you know what fresh water is. What about ecosystem? Do you know what that is? Oh, I see people out here know what it is. I see your hands, I see you standing. Oh, what about this one? The predator, what's predator? What does that mean? I see you, okay. So smart all of you are. Okay, what about this one? Come on, mega predator? Anyone know what that is? Well, I'm sure we're going to learn more. So now back to Phoebe in the field to tell us more about these vocabulary words. So be sure to pay attention. After this, we're going to have a YouTube poll. So what is fresh water? Fresh water is the type of water that's found in rivers, lakes, wetlands, swamps, and marshes. And it's different from most water in this planet, which is found in oceans. That type of water is called seawater and it's really salty. Whereas fresh water is different because it doesn't have a lot of salt in it. And that means that you get freshwater ecosystems that are different from ocean ecosystems. Now an ecosystem is a word scientists use to describe a sort of small world within the world. So the different animals and plants and water that you find inside this lake is called the Lake Muggelsee ecosystem. And the ecosystem you live in might be the ecosystem in your town, or we might go to a jungle or a rainforest, and that's a different type of ecosystem. So ecosystem is a word meaning this little world with inside the world. Now, my favorite type of ecosystems are freshwater ecosystems, because so many of the animals found in them are just really weird and look so strange, like this huge fish. Now, this is an American paddlefish, and what it's doing is eating. So it's swimming around with its mouth wide open to catch the tiny, tiny, tiny animals that live in the water that are called zooplankton. Um, so what are predators? Now predators are what we call any animal that eats any other animal for food. So this includes some of the really famous ones like tigers and sharks and crocodiles and also a lot which are less famous like giant salamanders. Yep, you heard me right. You can get giant salamanders in China and Japan that actually can get bigger than me. So we can see here some giant salamanders in an aquarium. Um, my favorite fact about them is their great dance. So the fathers, they will build a den and in that den, they will look after loads and loads of little eggs, which are the babies or gonna be the babies. Um, and the big dads who look after those babies are called den masters. So predators are really awesome. And the thing about freshwater predators is they're often really hard to see because they live in the murky waters. So you just don't know they're there. So we might have right under the water here, a two meter long catfish. And we're just not gonna be able to see it. Um, now, something like a two meter long catfish or a giant salamander is what we call a mega predator. So predators that are the biggest predators in their ecosystems. And for fresh waters, those are any predators which can get over about 30 kilograms. Now, to give you some idea of how big that is, that's about the size of a seven-year-old. So if any of you are younger than seven, that means that the predators can get bigger than you. And some of them can get absolutely massive in fact, some can get over six meters long. That's more than twice as long as this paddleboard. One mega predator who can reach that huge size of double my paddleboard is a white sturgeon. Now, these usually live in the end of rivers where they flow into the ocean, but they go back up to the top of rivers in order to lay their eggs. Now, this is an alligator gar. They're not quite as big, but they're another amazing mega predator that's found in the south of the USA. And this is an arapaima, one of my absolutely favorite fish. And weirdly, it actually gulps air to breathe. YouTubers, which mega predator do you think is the biggest mega predator? The beluga sturgeon? The saltwater crocodile? How about the giant freshwater stingray? 
or the arapaima, or also known as the giant freshwater fish. We're polling you. This is so much fun, TV. This is awesome. It's just about time for clip three. And then after this clip, we'll hear more from Phoebe about her work and have time for questions and answers from our live audience. Andre, please connect us back to Phoebe. So you may not have seen any freshwater mega predators because you may not have been looking, or maybe because so many fresh waters are so murky, you just don't know they're there under the surface. But it may also be that they're just gone because in loads of places around the world, these really cool freshwater species are disappearing because of the impacts we're having on the rivers, lakes and wetlands they live in. So many of them have declined because of pollution. So that's when people put their wastewater into rivers and it makes it too dirty for life to live in. Other issues are when people build dams in rivers. So dams are these big, um, like buildings that block the river and lots of fish need to go up river in order to lay their eggs. And if there's a dam in the way, they just can't get past. And this means all over the world, fish are unable to get to the places they need to reach to lay their eggs. So they're unable to have any babies. And so when those adults die, there's, oh, fly my eye. So when those adults die, there's nothing replacing them. And those species are disappearing off the face of the earth. That's why it's so important for scientists to study these species, because the better we understand them, the more ways we can try and help them and try and save them so that they're still here in rivers and lakes, people to see or often to not see um, in the future. Now, that's why I study some of my absolute favorite mega predators. And so right now, today, I'm on Lake Muggelsee, and this is in Germany. Now, Germany is a country in Europe. Um, it's quite cold, and we get a range of really interesting types of fish in this river. But I've actually spent most of my time working somewhere a lot warmer, where we get some very, very different types of mega predators. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna play you, oh, sorry about that, it got a bit choppy. Uh, but what we're gonna do now is play you guys a video um, that I made a couple of months ago when I was in Nepal. So Nepal is a country really far from Germany and it's in Asia and it's the country where there's Mount Everest, the tallest place in the world. But I live at the lowest point of the country, which is really far from Mount Everest and where you get my favorite mega predators, crocodiles. Hey guys, so I'm talking to you from a couple of months ago. Um, I'm here in Chitwan um, on the edge of the National Park and I'm gonna take you all with me for a day in the field. Let's go. All right, okay, we're on the way to the river and we'll go through the uh, grassland and jungle uh, to get there. And we've gotta be really careful because uh, this is really great habitat for wild elephants, rhinos, bears and tigers. Um, so we've gotta keep our eyes peeled and make sure that we see them long time before they see us so we can give them lots of space to get on with their day and we can get on with our day. Ronaldo um, and it can be pretty dangerous so we've got to be really careful and keep a good distance yeah, yeah. and make sure he doesn't notice us um, and there's also a rhino coming up over here that beach is a rhino so there's a lot of wildlife going on today but this area is cool because this is the type of beach that gorilla crocs like to nest in so it's got this really nice sand for them to dig holes in to lay their eggs. So we've made it, uh, we're here by the river. Um, and some really, really exciting animals to show you right here. So behind me on the bank here are loads and loads of two different types of crocodilians. 
Um, so what we have here are a type called mugger crocodiles and that's your kind of like classic crocodile. They've got this thick set chunky head, they can eat absolutely anything. They mostly eat fish but they will also take crustaceans, snails or even larger prey that they wait for at the edge of the water. Um, now the other one, then these are the ones I spend most of my time studying, are the gurriel and they have this incredibly long thin head which is specialised for catching fish and they only eat small aquatic animals like fish or maybe a soft shell turtle and they are actually two of the really big croc species so the gurriel can actually get to over six meters long making it one of the very 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 biggest crocodilian species in the world it's very exciting it's just over here on the riverbank is one of our adult male gurriels and he's really special because he's huge he's about five meters and he could actually get a lot bigger than that in the future Thank you again to Phoebe and all the students and teachers watching. We hope you join many more of our events. Our next event for ages 9 to 14 will be on Thursday, May 18th with explorer Ivan Kasaine. And we'll learn about jaguars, pumas, and bears. Oh my. So go ahead and, and, and register for this event and more at natgeoed.org backslash explorer classroom. You can request a chance to be featured on screen. And fellow teachers, we've also created interactive guides for you to share with your students to take them on a learning journey with each of our special guests. Find the Explorer Mindset in Action Guide and Teacher Edition linked on each event page, each event registration page. So have a great day, everyone. And remember to stay curious and keep exploring. Bye-bye.